welcome back to the next episode of The Joe Painting. I am Joe Lawson, your host and painter. Um, today I think we're going to do something, well, we're going to do it like normal, but uh, somebody on Twitter tweeted at me and suggested that I don't tell you what I'm going to paint, um, just kind of let it reveal itself on the canvas. Um, that being said, I am going to talk about what I'm doing, but I'm going to be really vague, um, so that way you, ca you guys can play like a, a little guessing game. Um, and you might catch me humming the tune, so that would be a clue. Um, and just so you guys know, before I go over my colors here, um, I'm using Devalu paints. I hope that's how you say it. Um, but I found these on Amazon for like 23 bucks. It's primable. You get a whole uh, range of colors. They're oil-based. Um, they're really awesome. I've come to really like them. Um, I, I looked around at some reviews first, and um, it seems like whether you're beginning, intermediate, or an advanced painter, these are these are um, pretty good to use. So if you want to get a nice color palette and paint along with me, I suggest these. I get 23 bucks, and you'll get a good uh, amount of mileage out of them. Let's see. Um, so those colors, uh, in com combination with Bob Ross's equipment, we're using his his easel here. Um, we're using a bunch of his uh, palette knives and brushes. I also have some brushes that I got from Michaels or any other craft store that you found you can or that's near you. Uh, same thing with these canvases. These are artist loft canvases. Um, they're they're doing the trick. They're good for these sketches that we do. Um, sometimes the canvas is a little bouncy, um, which can which can be hard to add different textures and stuff like that. Um, but we're making it work because these are just for fun um, and we're just exploring oil paint. Uh, we're painting video game scenes. We're just, you know, we're not, we're not trying to do the Mona Lisa here. Um, so my canvas here is mounted. It is covered in liquid white, real nice thin layer. Um, so that canvas is ready for the wet on wet technique. Um, so right here we have titanium white. We have cerulean blue, ultra blue, sap green. This is a mid yellow or a cadmium yellow. Uh, we have an orange yellow, this is a yellow ochre, uh, a raw umber, and then our ivory or Mars black. And again, this is kind of a mixture of different, uh, different kinds of paints. I guess you're going for, I know when Bob does the wet on wet technique, um, once you have like a wet layer down, you want your paint to be um, pretty thick. You can really see that with the yellow ochre, that's a really solid paint, it really stands up. Whereas um, this orange yellow or cad yellow or even the sap green, you can see that they're much more glossy, much more like an icing. Um, so there's more oil in, in those. So they're, they're wetter, they're gonna take longer to dry, um, and they might slick off of the wet paint you already have on there. So just pay attention. Um, I like to follow that rule. You can always add more. You can't necessarily take away. Um, so add a little and see how it does. Um, you know, test the water, stick your toe in and then go from there. Um, and again, that's all we're doing. We're just experimenting. We're trying out Bob's techniques. We're trying out techniques I've seen in other YouTube videos from other artists. Um, and I'm you know, trying my own things too. Um, I even played with the idea of painting with a chopstick today. Um, I don't know if we'll do that, but we will. We will get there. We'll get crazy. We're gonna, we're gonna start deviating um, soon. But don't worry, the classic brush on canvas black room format will, will be around to stay. Um, all right. Well, let's get started. And again, I'm not going to tell you what I'm what I'm painting, but I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through it anyway. So we have a very blue sky up here, um, and then we have a shimmering ocean right there. So these blue, this sky blue is going to be really intense. That's why I brought in the ultra blue. Um, that water is much more um, pale. There's you know it's it's horizontal or it's perpendicular to the light so there's it's absorbing more light so it's a lighter blue and we'll have a lot of, of shimmering uh, white caps in there as well so for that we'll probably be visiting the cerulean blue with the yeah the cerulean blue um, and you know additionally if you didn't want to use two different blues or you know two different yellows um, you know you can mix your own paint I luckily with that Dave Lou paint set um, there, again there's a, a nice range of colors in there so you can just Put them on your palette and jump right in, and then you know mix and alter as you go. Um, so you know that it's good. You know for practicing color, it's good to start with you know the base colors and try to paint um, or mix your own colors and get you know really you know find out what it takes to get proper colors and the proper tack from your paint and things like that. Um, but again, we're in sketch mode. We're just having fun, so we're not we're not doing the the full Monty. Um, so yeah, so we have our, our deep blue sky, our lighter water, and then sort of right in between, like on the on 
the right in between those two layers on top of them is a jagged mountain scene. There's some waterfalls, um, some foliage in the background, and then you have your water, and then we have our foreground, and that has some palm trees, some sunflowers, um, and then a particular form of stage there. Um, so yeah, I know we're doing a lot of water scenes, a lot of um, a lot of oceanscapes, um, but I, frankly, I just have a lot of fun doing them. They're bright, they're you know sunshiny. Um, they really you know motivate me to to really give it my all when I'm doing these paintings. So, you know, if you don't want to, you know, paint along today or if you can't, um, grab some pen and paper, pencil, colored pencil, you know, maybe you have markers or colored pencils, maybe you have these colors or colors that are close. Um, you don't have to paint today, but, you know, you're going to spend this time with me right now. Might as well whip out a sketchbook or um, some notebook paper, whatever you got that you can draw on or make a mark on. Get it and let's get going. All right. As usual, I'm going to load my brush up with this ultra blue and get started on this guy. And just real soft with these X's, just move across. And we're lucky because our, our scene here is split into thirds. So this top third is our sky, this middle third is our lighter blue ocean, and then this lower third is our foreground. That's where um, our trees and our flowers and our land is going to be. And so I'm just going to focus on getting this to the intensity that I want. And luckily, since you know these are both blues, you can, like usual, kind of walk, walk that blue down and then let it mingle with the liquid white that you put on the canvas before you got started. And that blue's value will mix with the white and get lighter and lighter, which is kind of what we want. And maybe we'll come back in with that cerulean and really touch it up. And unfortunately, that liquid white, it's really present there, you can see. So that this blue is becoming that. And, you know, I'm putting quite a bit. That might be a, a touch-up phase. We come in and make this sky as blue as we can get it. All right. So now I'm just going to grab some of that cerulean. And let's see, about, about here. Woo! What up, Cerulean? I don't think we've ever met on the canvas before, that I recall. No, we did, when I painted Halo. I think I employed you. So we're just kind of establishing this zone. And before we kind of go everywhere with it, we're just making sure our proportions are how we originally envisioned them as well as if they make sense when they're actually in front of you on the canvas. And I'm just going to walk, walk it up either direction to the desired width on my canvas that I want. And again, I'm just mainly using the same brush stroke over and over, just soft X's. Sometimes I'm going horizontal, sometimes vertical, sometimes 45, just playing with it. You're seeing how these paints want to meet each other. Look at these little interlopers in here that are just pain in the butt. All right. We are almost ready to proceed. I'm just gently kind of back and forth. Smoothing it in, and that'll reveal any sort of paint islands where it's a little heavier than the rest. All right, let's see. Yep, and right in there is where I'm going to be dancing with our rock formation. So I'm just going to give this one little blast of cerulean. Hopefully it's the last blast. And bulk up this area where I know the water is going to meet the land formation. I want a nice, strong occupation of that water. All right, and just smoothing these out, gently dragging that whole plane of the brush across. Just let the, that very edge just drift across. All right, let's check it out. I think we're good to go. Maybe bulk this up. And luckily, we're going to do this a little later, so I can come down here and 
work on this water line a little more. Because I want to build this out, and that'll inform where this is going to be, and that'll inform where my water line is going to reach that landform. So until then, I'm going to clean our brush out and our odorless paint thinner. I have a little pail here. It has a vinyl-coated screen on the bottom. Just drag my bristles over it. It pulls out the paint. Paint thinner loosens the paint. Before you know it, it's out. Try to get as much of that thinner out of your brush. Just drag it along the side. Flip it over. Drag it. And I just kind of give it some taps. And you'll see the thinner kind of jump out. Just be careful how much you shake it. And then I have another pail. Shake that into. And then you beat the devil out of it. Yeah! Just like that. Just like Bob taught us. So I'm going to load up my one inch brush. Same, br same brush as that two inch. Um, just one inch. Natural bristles. And I'm just pulling that paint down into the corner. And I'm only going to be using the corner. Just kind of poke them in there with the corner of your brush, real gentle. This game has tiny clouds floating off in the distance. Do a little bigger one over here. You got a low, kind of wide base, popcorn top. Do one more. Way back there. Little tiny dude. Just drifting. Got nowhere to be. I'm gonna clean out my one inch. I picked up a little, actually a good amount of blue. We're gonna palette knife this guy. I've decided. And I'll go back in with my smaller brushes and do those details, really shape out those that rock formation. So um, when we do rocks with our palette knife, um, we're really just focusing on the edge of that rock, not necessarily the fill. We're not there to, we're not doing this technique to, to paint in the rock. We're just carving out the territory of that, of that space. So I know my rocks are probably going to reach up to about here. I kind of want them to drop about here. That's kind of across the board. So I'm just kind of staking out my territory. Nothing too serious yet. We have a waterfall right here, actually. See, that worked out nice. Just drag real lightly. The paint will come off. Really just laying that edge in. And I'm not going to be too worried about this area just because there's going to be some foliage on top that's going to break it up. So it doesn't have to be too too filled in at the moment. And then the rest of this is just really eclectic. And I'm just going to draw these spires. Some are close, some are small. Is this coming to life for you all? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? Or do you need, you just need to see more? Here's another edge that I need to focus on. Right. Yeah. It's not a very big waterfall. It's just a little, little outlet around this corner. And I'm just getting inventive. I, I see my reference over there. I see what it's showing me, but it's really up to me if you know what I'm putting over here, how it looks. You're not going after the exact form per se, it's the flavor of your own experience. If it jives with you, then you're probably making the right design choices in your painting. Yeah, see, and these are coming to life and, and just the way that I'm applying the paint. And I like the effect that's coming out of them. And they're off in the distance. You know, you don't, they're not right in front of you, so it's, it's hard to really argue, you know, is it right, is it wrong? Does that even matter? And yeah, we'll come back in. If we run out of this paint, we'll mix some more up. We'll come in here and we'll fill these in. Because there's a lot of shadow on these for some reason. Middle of the damn day, sunshine on the ocean, and then it's dark. 
but we'll figure that out. Got another pretty big spire over here. Don't want to overlap my clouds. They're not that tall. And I'm just kind of, if you're an animator, if you ever, um, you know, work with keyframes, that's kind of what I'm doing is I'm, these are the more prominent focal points that establish the majority of this form. And then I'll come in like I did over here and just kind of build them in. So this is just giving me a lay of the land, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of this rock formation and how it all comes together. So that's all what I'm really doing is. And that's where you practice your chaos. You know, you don't want the same line across. Then you have your eye recognizes that pattern and suddenly that natural formation is just lines on a page. But this is where you, you know, you, I almost, what I, what I try to, Matt, what I'm referencing in my mind always is like a music waveform. That's how I practice my chaos. You see those peaks and valleys, and, and you know in there there's like human soul and, and work and design and poetry. But it's all condensed down into this jagged line. So that's what I'm doing is I'm accessing those waveforms as I step these out, and I'm seeing what, what, what's interesting about this layout. And now I'll start stepping it in. Maybe there's another guy that's pretty tall. Yeah, this is a fun painting. You can really, really invent with it. And still, I'm still just focusing on my edges and my form. And we'll come back in. Certainly, come back in and uh, uh, add you know add the details and the shadow and the distinctiveness of each of these little spires, these sand shales, if you will. I don't know what else they could be. It's cool when you get to a point with oil painting or just painting in general. Like you know, this is such a much bigger undertaking than whipping out your sketchbook and a pen and just getting to work. But it's great when you get to a point where you feel comfortable and excited and you know just are able to to sketch on the canvas and let it you know become what it wants to become. Art is a medium for discovery. I don't go uh, go to art to put something in in the art. It's I go to the art to discover what I need to teach myself in that moment. And the canvas any canvas, any medium can help you see yourself and others. Show yourself to others. All right, home stretch. I'm just going to carve this out a little more. So what we have is these spires, and they kind of crescendo here where the waterfall is, kind of imply something about this rock formation. Still don't know anything or can make no decent guesses as to what's going on with these rocks. If you're a geologist and you're watching this, fill me in. Now I have this flat brush. Let's see, is there a number on it? This is a 12 from Winton. And I'm just going to do, start pulling these, pulling these down, pulling these up. Start making these edges meet. This is a pretty stiff brush, but that's okay. We're just building the body of this rock. So usually what I always do, or I've been taught to do, or I've seen done, um, is you block colors out. You build, you know, if you see this rock formation and this is, you know, that paint color is like, you know, at midday, omnipresent light, that's the color of the rock. But then your shadow turns into a darker, like that burnt umber, or that raw umber, and your highlights are maybe a mid-yellow. Maybe it's just a stark yellow, the sun's just beaming on it, and it's really pulling out the yellow of that rock color. Um, you start with that middle, and you fill that in. And you get that nice and even, as best you can. And then, you mix with that, that middle color, that, that base color. Then you start mixing your highlight of that color, and then your shadow of that color. And then you come in, and those shadows and those highlights give that flat plane of color form in space. 
And it also shows the people looking at the painting, your viewer, it shows you where that light source is coming from. So once again, I'm going to use my one inch, just load up the corner. I'm going to do it like I did my clouds. I just kind of push these guys in there. Push them in, create these different islands of that green. Just walk it right down to the edge of that water. So we have that vegetation just kind of creeping down. here that just kind of are like we're going swimming and then I'm gonna go straight yellow just pull some into the corner of that brush and just start tapping the tops of these guys man there's so much green there and it's okay if you're your green and your yellow mix because you want them to mingle anyway Yum. Gonna give them a quick clean. I feel like at, at least once per painting, I go mud and get too much wet paint on your canvas and it's game over. I'll take his palette knife, get a nice bead of white on the edge, and just kind of carve these, these lines in. That's what we're about to do. That's how we're gonna build our waterfall too. Is that lighter? Yeah. All right. And then take some of your white, pull it out into a nice ribbon, and then we're gonna start cutting those those waves in there. Let's see. Probably should have done these water lines first and then brought my plants in. Live and learn. So I'm just going to go with my palette knife and just start giving these. So my light's going to be going like, so I'm going to highlight these dudes if I can. French Fry Mountain over here. I know the reference photo says we got some big dark shadows over here, but I want bright and sunshiny French Fry Rocks. Damn it. And that's what we're going to get. And if that yellow that you mixed up isn't doing the trick, feel free to just jump to straight, straight up yellow. Maybe on some particular so just like my other formation I'm gonna walk this one in just going to so we got like a little peak right here got a low right here sort of levels off right here down a little bit and it swoops up. And it just kind of swoops down here. That's where the party gets started. And 
this line here doesn't have to be perfect because we will have some grass in there. I've said too much. So that goes back. Set my palette knife aside for a second. I'm just going to take my one inch brush and load this guy up with that brown I mixed, that ochre rather, and just fill this guy in. So now, I'm going to clean this brush out. Oh, I have my palette knife here I neglected. I need to clean him off too. Now we're going to do some trees. I'm just going to do some of that orange yellow with my cad yellow. So we got one right here, man. That guy goes all the way up, but we're not going to go all the way up. We're going to go about to right there. These suckers go straight up too. Too much paint on my palette knife. Okay. So I just kind of sketched that guy out. And. Man, this palette knife is so difficult. It'd be cool to come back to these paintings and make them, remake them digitally. I like doing digital work because it's more dynamic layering. Taking some of my sap green, my cad yellow. Only need a little bit of green, it's pretty dark. I don't need too much of this. I'm just creating the green for the stalk of my sunflower. the sunflower as I've as per my reference so I noticed in my reference image that these sunflower petals are like triangles they're not like loopy petals so I'm just carving those out right now you got like Two going up and down, two going left and right. Something like that. You get the point. So we start with one triangle going to the right. The wall of the other one on the right going left. I'm just kind of sketching it right now. And once I get it to where I want it, I'll go back in with yellow. All right, gonna clean out that little pencil brush I'm using. Get all that paint thinner out, dry it off. <clears throat> and then, let's see. I'm gonna visit some more sap green. Don't need a lot. Maybe bring some yellow in there. Same thing we're doing for these stalks. Um, I'm just gonna come up here and start doing my Palms. Man, 
it's really hard to lay color down on top of wet paint. It just soaks it up. And they start making their own color. I'm just kind of freehanding these. Palms tend, you know, they're big, leafy fronds. There's weight to them, they catch the wind. They're juicier leaves. And I'll go back in in a second and add more of that green. Man, I feel like I'm back in like third grade. Draw and paint whatever comes to mind. Hey, that's a sweet texture. Sorry, water bushes. I gotta come in here and palm these trees, man. Let's give them one more. Use that texture to our advantage. Nope, going for two. Might touch them up a little later. Clean that guy, dry him off, and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of green. It was just pure sap green. Load up my little pencil brush. And I'm gonna just give these sunflowers a little rounded center. get my little pencil flat brush and I'm just going to go to this raw umber. Pretty sure that's what I listed, right? Yep, we're using the raw umber and I'm just going to get a nice edge on this brush. I'm going to fill it with paint, just drag it out into the bristles, but also being mindful of the edge of the brush. And what I'm going to do start doing this little grid pattern. So starting, you don't have to go right up to the edge, um, but just kind of imagine like a pixel grid going right across there, flat, X, Y, up one, over one. Might start here in the corner, just and do another one. It's okay if you don't get the full amount of umber you want right away. We're just kind of staking out the territory. These are going to be sloppy pixels. Seems like it's good to start in the bottom two rows, establish a foundation. Or if you're feeling real squirrely, you can get a piece of paper the size of this and cut out all the squares and lay it over it. And then just dapple over top of it, and pull it up, and you got your pixel texture, in theory. Probably would use cardstock if you do that. Maybe some cardboard. We made it. Gonna give it another clean. Picked up a lot of paint on that run. Is this what it's like to play Minecraft? Fucking dealing with cubes all the time. This is all out of whack. That is okay. Finally. Neat. All right. Go straight into our green. Load up both sides of my brush with my fan brush. Load that dude up.
some blue snuck in there. I'm going to grab a little more sap green. I'm just kind of pushing right on that midline, flicking up. some of that ultra blue going down, bring some cerulean in, and then a little bit of white. I wonder if we can do something cool here. Just want to go, let's see right here. Yeah! Mr. Hedgehog. In full stride. Needs more blue. There he is. Anyway, this is more of a oil illustration than it is an oil painting. But I like it. it. Has some charm. It's very impressionist. But definitely could use some touch ups. But I'm going to let this layer dry and then I think. Sanic's going to make a reappearance in the Twitch touch-ups. You're not supposed to know about that yet. But we will be doing touch-ups at some point. Going to revisit these, but all in all, that's some Green Hill Zone, y'all. Thank you for joining me. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Tweet at me if you drew today. Um, definitely show me what you're working on. I want to see it. I want to see what everybody's working on, what everyone's doing, whether it's painting, drawing, whatever. Show me the money. All right, y'all. Uh, as always, thank you for joining me on the Joe of Painting, this episode of Sanic, the Hedgehog. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.